Welcome back to Cold Waters with Whiskey Wilson. Today we're going to do another montage. It's going to be sort of a mix of what had happened um, following the last episode with all those torpedoes. So what we wound up doing is putting into port over at Holy Lock and then coming out to intercept a, submar a submarine tender and we have found our objective at this point in time. We're back over in the Barents Sea if I recall correctly and what we're doing right now is trying to determine what surface vessels uh, are comprised of this task force that we've run across. Um, I will tell you right now, a Pody frigate is not one of them, uh, so I definitely have mismarked them. Uh, I'm going to be using a series of like shortcuts uh, and time compression uh, here for you just to kind of get through it all. I really don't want you to miss any of the action, though I do know that sometimes the action has more tension in the moment than it does when you're watching it uh, as a replay. So what I'm doing right now is attacking the three surface vessels with Tomahawk um, sea missiles. So I've, um, you can see the plumes here. I'm going ahead and s learned my lesson from the last time and started moving. You can see the Dawn taking the first hit. The white plumes there are countermeasures that force the missile aimed at the pody or at the um, destroyer, the closest destroyer, the one that's marked incorrectly as a pody, uh, directs one of them back to the dawn, and then the third one actually just splashes down harmlessly um, near near that destroyer as well. So that's the first problem. Um, so we launched three missiles, only one of which, two of which hit, but only one target. And they return fire with a SSN-14 um, rocket-launched uh, torpedo. And so what we've done is return fire before we go into flank um, speed to start evasion of this torpedo. We drop a noisemaker to kind of help distract it while we do this. Uh, we send that snapshot off to that uh, destroyer in the hopes that it will keep it busy and or actually sink it. They've managed to launch two torpedoes at us from the air. Um, so what you're seeing me now is doing my classic um, method for defeating and evading torpedoes. Step one is don't get found. Obviously, if you're going to use a tomahawk, you're going to get found. So step two is get your speed up. So anything over 26 knots is going to be where you want to start with. Uh, some submarines aren't capable of doing it. I know like the Sturgeon class isn't capable of doing more than 20. So you can't really use this, this, this method that I use, which is basically the idea behind it is that you want to get all of the potential target, sub, uh, target torpedoes that are coming at you to get into your rear cone and then you're going to start going left and right as much as you uh whenever you get one of them or both of or as many of them as you can acquired onto you when you do that when you go left and right suddenly it creates what's called a knuckle it's a volume of turbulent uh water that confuses the sonar and actually will register a fake a fake signature for the active homing for the torpedoes. It b bounces off almost like it's a submarine itself. As a result, sometimes, and I do think you see it in this video, you'll actually see them turn around and attack the knuckle instead of continuing to engage me. And here we are, we're going to, what we've done is launched a um, torpedo at the third and final target. What's happened here is that our first torpedo gets gets caught up in a bug in the game uh, where one of the ships doesn't sink and instead of homing in on the sunk ship it just kind of spins around in a circle. It's the first time I've ever seen it. What you're seeing right now is the this particular mission run at 200% speed just because we have I have a lot that I want to show you out of this episode. Uh, some of it's more important than others. So what we wind up doing is shooting a third missile, uh, third torpedo at the target. This one is going to be uh, the Krivik one, uh, and it's the final ship here. Uh, we do wind up sinking it, but not before it launches a torpedo back at us. Uh, once again, they use these like 
rocket assisted torpedoes i hope to eventually catch one in flight for you guys so that you know what we're looking at but there he goes overhead so we're going back to um torpedo evasion speed which is flank speed for us and i want you to pay attention to the left hand side just above the map and you can see what i do in order to uh basically begin torpedo evasion so i'm coming i'm what i want to do is i want to keep my propeller pointed at the enemy torpedo then i go rudder amidships and you can neutralize all of your maneuver by pressing the end key in this game and then so what i do is i then eventually in order to create a knuckle i go from rudder amidships hard to port or starboard and then immediately rudder amidships and then hard to the opposite side and that'll and that sudden change in rudder shift actually creates the knuckle for you and it's a lot easier of a way to create it than holding down the opposite um the opposite button like so if you're doing left and then having to hold it for right and then having it swing the whole way having it immediately hit um rudder amidships and then you only have to go to the left or to the right makes it so much faster and that creates a knuckle so much quicker as a result you can see here all it took was one knuckle to completely avoid this uh torpedo so what we're doing now is we're just keeping an eye on it as it swims around trying to acquire a target that is no longer there As you saw there, it was a Grisha instead of a Pody that we had thought to engage. Our next mission is to drop off a SEAL team. I don't really like this mission when I get it um, in this particular case. Uh, the reason why is because we were we had just come out of port and we were completely fully loaded uh, with missiles and torpedoes. And so it was a real waste to get that mission right after we've gone into port. If, I, if we were empty, yeah, sure, go in pick up a SEAL team instead of weapons and then go and drop them off and then come back. So what I'm doing right now is instead of doing the actual mission, I am attempting to find every target that we have on the strategic map in order to sink all of it so we're wasting weapons by getting tonnage instead of putting them all back into Holy Luck's uh, supply chain, which does us no good uh, for trying to meet our challenge, which the challenge now is not even a million tons, it's over two million tons. We, so we have a long way to go on it. And here's us sinking the first uh, target of opportunity, which is a Kilo class. The Kilo class is a diesel electric attack submarine from Russia. It was originally commissioned in 1990, and there's currently about 70 that they've actually completed. Uh, and they are in a number of other navies, including India, North Korea, Iran. Uh, it's in Poland, Romania, Algeria, and Vietnam as well. Uh, it's not a very it, it's not very capable against the modern nuclear navy of the U.S. But the nice the what makes it very difficult to deal with is that it is very quiet. Um, here's another engagement where I am prosecuting now a Tango and a Kilo. The Tango is the predecessor to the Kilo. Uh, the Kilo's got a l number of advantages than, that the Tango does not have. Um, but as you see, I've already sunk one, I sink the other. Uh, this is a lot of boring gameplay from the standpoint of watching, just because I'm actually attacking things that I don't have full solutions on, so you can't necessarily see the end, the target even as it's getting um, shot at. And of course, getting the jump on the enemy submarines means that I have the opportunity to shoot first before they even have a chance to react to my presence. So that really means that for, as far as gameplay goes, it's not necessarily the most entertaining to watch. It's like, hey, I'm doing the job right, so everything's sort of copacetic. Uh, but I did want to show you all um, you know, the, sh the shoot shots as much as I could here. Uh, but I am using a lot of um, time compression, both in-game and uh, through the video editing process, just to make it a little bit more bearable for you all to go through. The diesel subs that you see here, like both the Tango and the Kilo, are rumored to be able to stay underwater operating on their electric motor system for almost a week at a time. So that really means that they're able to loiter in an area and ambush, and a diesel, when a diesel electric sub, when it's on electric power, is much more quiet than a nuclear sub.
So there we've got two ta two more tangos sunk. Uh, we're now in another engagement. This is a surface contact engagement. Uh, I am trying to use the periscope to find them, but obviously we get a sea squall. It's at nighttime and it's also raining, so we're not going to have a lot of luck with this. Um, one thing that did change between this video, uh, there's a helicopter in that briefly, so we re so I realized very quickly that whatever is out there is likely a, a Udaloy or a Cresta, perhaps a Krivak 2, um, or potentially something even as large as one of the helicopter carriers, such as the Kiev or the Moskva. Um, so now I'm trying to look for them. Unfortunately, the way this game's set up, um, you cannot see visual. Well, at this point in time, I shouldn't say not the way the game's set up. The way I had played this game um, for the first few days that I was in this campaign is that I had a select button deselected, um, or, the, or I should say I had it enabled where it would hide the visual rendering of ships that I don't actually have a complete shooting solution on. Um, so as a result, there are ships out there that aren't being rendered, even though I might be able to see them within like a visual distance. Um, so what I'm doing now is shooting based on what direction that I see the contacts in. Um, it's not necessarily the most entertaining, so we're fast forwarding through a lot of this and you see the um, adjustments that I make as I kind of take a little bit of control over the um, torpedo itself as I try and shoot down this uh, car cruiser, which is what it becomes. What's interesting, if you pay attention, this very moment in it is we actually wind up with a Victor submarine that actually gets found first by this torpedo before it inter is intercepted by the cruiser. Um, that sends the Victor into a, a torpedo evasion mode, so it doesn't get a chance to shoot at me at all. Uh, you can see its knuckle and um, noisemaker is flashing there in the plot on the plot screen I shoot a third torpedo so at this point I actually still have three torpedoes in the water and I don't know it the second torpedo just sort of falls off the sonar because the environment that we're playing in it's uh, over 110 decibels so it is actually quite loud in so we're not going to be able to sonars having a real hard time getting and keeping any contacts whatsoever including surface vessels just because of the ambient noise level and the fact that we're in not terribly shallow but not terribly deep waters either uh the first torpedo finds its mark and on that victor three and we still have our other two torpedoes trying to engage the surface contacts that we have so there's our second one taken almost immediately and then now we just have this third tor torpedo heading for the car cruiser So at this point, the torpedo has full acquiring of the car cruiser in its sights. At this point, oh, if we had seen the target, we'd probably see it start maneuvering um, counteractively. And there it goes off in the distance. Uh, the car does carry a helicopter with it that we saw earlier, so all you're going to see now is just a little bit of time compression as we dive and turn to exfiltrate from the area. The car is actually a pretty heavy and hefty cruiser to go up against. It's not the hardest thing to take down. I would think that a Krivak 2 or a um, Udaloy would be more difficult. But I mean, it definitely has the SSN-14 Silex um, anti-torpedo missiles or anti-submarine torpedo missiles, as well as the RBU-6000 and RBU-1000 depth charges, which are basically rockets that drop depth, that eventually just fall in and then turn into a depth, and then basically become depth charges from there. Um, those are probably the worst of it. The, where the car lacks is in its ability to detect where the Udaloy really, that's where the Udaloy really shines. Our final clip today has us going against a wolf pack of three Soviet era nuclear submarines. We actually have two Victor 3s, one of which is not yet detected, and a Sierra. 
The Victor 3s are an older attack submarine built and designed back in the late 60s to late 70s. Um, the Victor 3 in particular was, entered service in 1979. They built to 25 of them until about 1991. Uh, they're quieter than the previous era, but they're not nearly as quiet as the Sierra and their follow-on Akula class. Um, th operationally, the Victor 3 served alongside of, although it was produced before the Alpha class, which is definitely a more drag, drag racer sort of brawler submarine. It's known for going fast, being loud, and just punching stuff in the nose. The Sierras, whereas the Sierras and the Victors were a little bit, were they focused on trying to be a little bit quieter. They're not quite as fast. The Sierras in particular were interesting innovations, uh, if not incredibly expensive submarines, because they were built with a titanium hull, which allowed them to dive much deeper than most US submarines at the time. And they also were able to take more torpedo damage. That's not modeled very well. I'm not sure if it's modeled accurately, but it's not modeled very well compared to the other submarines, given that they still only need one Mark 48 ad cap to uh, take a sink. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I have the first of the three submarines, and I, what I generally like to do is engage as many of them as I can at once, just because I don't want one of them to get the jump on me because I'm tunnel visioning on the one that's nearest by. So this is uh, the first one that we're engaging. That one's a Victor 3. While there are differences between the Sierras and the Victors, I, I, I always feel like this sort of era submarine, they do actually look sort of similar, at least in rendering. Then again, I'm not. I've never been in the U.S. Navy. I'm not necessarily. I'm definitely not what I would consider myself as an expert. But they do look similar to me. In the game, actually, the Akula and the Sierra Twos are identical. But that's mainly a an, a workaround that the modder, the mod creator, had to use in order to make sure that he had the sample for the actual submarine. The Akula class wasn't something that was introduced in the 80s, it was the latest and greatest sort of like swan song for the Russian submarine fleet. And as a result, the 1984 campaign, which is the most uh, advanced timeline vanilla campaign that the game comes with, they had to use what they had to go with. And I'm I honestly haven't seen a picture of an Akula, so I wouldn't know whether or not it's an accurate depiction or not. All I do know is it confuses the heck out of me because it shares the si the sonar signature with the Sierra 2 submarine. <laughs> um, so whether or not you get that one right or wrong is a complete crapshoot. So here we are engaging the second uh, Victor 3 with that second torpedo that we had fired at, at the same time we had fired the, f the first one. Um, this is me really failing at the camera as I'm trying to attack it, and that is the resulting sinking of that ship. So, the last thing we have is the Sierra, which is due to the south of us. Excuse me. So that's the f two submarines that we had sunk the two Victor 2s off to the north of that torpedo as it travels down south. Currently, there seems to be only four Sierra-class submarines uh, in active service in the Russian Navy, so uh, I wish it were true, but if we actually sink this one, we should only have three left to find on the map. Not going to be true at all. Uh, the com what, su what ships you end up engaging is a com seems to be a complete random chance. Eventually, this submarine's going to get real panicky here and cavitate for a minute, and that'll give us a complete solution on him and then that'll allow us to watch the torpedo go in completely accurately here. Okay, so what I've done there is point my nose at him and try to get a sonar read through active sonar, but that does not seem to have returned a full solution on it for us. We're getting a lot closer on the solution, but it's definitely not the precise one that we're looking for. There we see a noisemaker getting dropped 
that means that this torpedo is nearby and is actually going fast enough to create a knuckle. And that's what that brief plume was that disappeared. And there he is there. Now he's starting to cavitate for some reason uh, when he wasn't before. I guess he just really went full flank bell on him. That's allowing us to see to get a full uh, solution on the on this particular target. At this point, I take manual control of it because I'm somewhat wary of him. Um, actually, it doesn't look like I've quite taken manual control, but maybe I have. At any rate, we wind up sinking this guy with a shot to the nose, and that ends this particular engagement here. So that wraps up this episode of Cold Waters with Whiskey Wilson. I really hope you enjoyed it today. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It really does help the channel out. Have a good one.